Now, Han Dong left the Liberal Party to sit as an independent MP after media reporting last year alleged he may have been involved in Chinese elections meddling, claims he denied and countered with legal action. Dong today saying that he'd like to return to the Liberal Party. With us now to unpack the latest details from the inquiry so far are two reporters who have broken the majority of stories on the issue, the Globe and Mail's Robert Fife here in studio with me, and on site at the inquiry, the Globe's Steve Chase. Hello to both of you. Thanks for making the time. Steve, I'll start with you because you're there. Glad to be here. What is your main takeaway from the testimony from Han Dong? What, what do Canadians need to know tonight about what he said? Han Dong updated his testimony today, uh, updated what he was going, the information he was providing to the inquiry to explain that there was a bus that he had, had neglected to uh, mention before, a bus that took a, a, a whole a busload of international students uh, to come to his nomination meeting and presumably to vote for him. So we had a very interesting insight into uh, some of the, the machinations around the nomination race in 2019, which of course has been an ongoing source of interest for people over the last few years. So um, interest in discussion about international students voting in the race uh, and him adding information we didn't know before. But um, he was reluctant to talk about his future in the Liberal Party. He said he wanted to come back to the Liberal Party. Of course, Hendong left the, the uh, caucus back in 2023. Uh, and so a lot of unanswered questions about his future and, and, where, and where it goes from here. And we have, Bob, reached out, I'm sure you have as well, to the Liberals, to the Whip's office to find out if he will be or under what conditions welcome back into caucus. No answer at, as well, of yet. He won't be, he won't hey, be welcome hey, back. T tell, tell me why in your view that's well, the case. Well, uh, this was a very bad day for Han Dong. There was a lot of hemming and hawing. He couldn't remember a lot of things. Like, why did you suddenly remember that there was a bus of Chinese international students that you had bussed in? Oh, well, I kind of brought uh, my, I was talking to my lawyer, and it, it came up my, and I, I just realized that. So he, this was on Monday, he realized this when talking to his lawyer. Then when I was pressed a little farther, well, actually, my wife reminded me of it. So why did it take six weeks since the original interview for you to come up and, and, and explain why these uh, students uh, were uh, bussed in to uh, support you. Uh, and were some of them, as CSIS has alleged, did they have false documents? Well, he said, well, of course, I would be the first to condemn that. So he had a very bad performance. The one, th one thing uh, he also looked very bad on is David Johnson had said uh, over uh, the, the Global uh, News report that he had, uh, that Global had reported that he had told the Chinese Consul General in Toronto, uh, don't release the two Michaels right now because it will, before the election because it'll help the Conservatives. Now, Johnson said that it. was false. Yes. But, but if you listen to the testimony, he didn't say that, but he also didn't make it, he wasn't clearly saying, hey, uh, let's get the Michaels out right away. He, according to a summary of the CSIS recording of that conversation, he says, if the PCR, PRC released the two Michaels at that moment, opposition parties would view the PRC's action as an affirmation of the effectiveness of a hardline Canadian approach to the PRC. So he didn't look very good out of this either. I mean, clearly he wasn't saying hold them until after the election campaign, but he wasn't exactly saying, hey, can you release them? Which is what he's been saying all along. Steve, in addition to hearing from uh, Han Dong today, uh, officials from the political parties who were essentially running the various campaigns in the 2021 election, which both of you have reported extensively on, said even the mechanisms that were in place to warn them or to brief them on that kind of foreign interference didn't really do that. Is that your takeaway from that testimony as well? Yeah, it was a bit shocking. There was a document that was uh, tabled today for the public to read about how in July 2021, just a month before the election, weeks before the election, uh, there was a very clear warnings that the uh, Chinese government would be the foremost aggressor in the next election. And uh, people from the NDP, the Liberals and the Conservatives who were up on the uh, as testi uh, providing testimony today, all three of them, their job was to interact with the government. All three of them said they'd never seen this before. They'd never seen any warnings about this before. So uh, it, that's remarkable given what we know now uh, of how somebody failed to, to, to take the information they had inside government and share it with the political parties. Why, in your view, is that relevant uh, to the bigger it, picture This here? is the really right. most important thing. Uh, Steve's nailed it. The, we're in an election campaign. Chinese foreign interference is a serious issue. 
uh, particularly in ridings where there was heavy concentration of Chinese Canadians. Um, the parties are, the government sets up this special group of uh, senior civil servants to advise them and, uh, and warn them about foreign interference threats. They have all this information about Chinese state and proxy inter interference in the election campaign, and they don't tell the three main party representatives, who, by the way, have had security clearances. Every extensive one of those, security clearances extensive, they testified And every today, one of them yeah. said, if had we known about this, we could have taken some action. And it was more than that. I mean, they're even told at one the site even knows at one point that the, that the uh, Chinese government is making real efforts to target the, the Conservative Party's election platform. Do not tell the Conservatives Party at all. So this is a really serious issue here when independent, neutral public servants have intelligence and they do not share it with the other parties, with the political parties, about the extent of Chinese state foreign interference in the 2021 election campaign. Yeah, a lot of details today, actually, that kind of underline the significance or the utility of this inquiry. It's been uh, really interesting to watch. And more testimony tonight from Michael Chan, as you saw off the top of the segment. I want to thank both of you, you. for your analysis this afternoon. Steve Chase and Bob Fife, both with The Globe and Mail.